This is our starting point. It's a 1974 Corvette. We picked it up out of Arizona for about 5,000 bucks. Four speed car, it was a small block. There's no motor in it now. My dream would be 1969, wide body, side pipe, slam Corvette on huge wheels and tires. That would be cool. This isn't it. We can't afford that story as old as time. We're gonna have to make it instead, right? I think we're gonna cut it just in front of where the reinforcement is. Further back, someone's done some repairs, so it's worthless. Here we go. If you were a superhero, the Sawzall would be your power. I am a superhero. This is super fun. Throw some weight into it. Throw your 130 pounds into it. It's heavier than I thought. There it is. <gasps> Sweet. So sometimes you buy the car first and then you build an engine for it. We did the opposite on this thing. We built this awesome Vortex 7400 Chevy big block and had to find something to put it in. This is a late model 454. It's the last one they made, which means it's got roller cam in it. Comes with a pretty decent head on there. One piece oil pan, one piece rear main seal. We put on a set of Speedmaster heads and a big comp camshaft, and it made 473 horsepower, 472 foot pound of torque. It is a big, rowdy, awesome motor. Let's jam it in there. Coming in now, going down. Just to keep it real, we're waiting on a bell housing, um, but we just want to see how it fits in the car, make sure the pan clears, and. We may lay the headers in and see what they look like. And we have zero patience. That's true. It's gonna look cool as heck. We're like little kids. Come on down. Coming down. There it is. Yep. Okay, right there. Hold it. I can see this side looks good. There it is. Finding interference is one of the main reasons we do these test fits. Looks like we've got a problem between our tall valve cover that we need to clear all our valve train because we've got a high lift cam and our brake booster here. So we're gonna have to figure something out. Hey, I now. totally knew that. Totally knew it. So one of my absolute favorite parts for this build are these sick hooker headers. These are proper side pipes, four into one, equal length into a four inch outlet header that's gonna run right down the side of the car. I could not be more stoked about these things. And what's cool is I was like, do you guys still make that header? We looked online and I was like, can I see some fitment pics or whatever? And they sent me pictures when they designed these things in 1971. And these are legitimate 70s street machine pieces. Okay, here we go. They're also kind of pricey. Uh, it's kind of heavy. Take an opportunity to apologize to my shins right now. These headers are sick. Part number is 22221HKR. It's like we're building a Hot Wheels car in real life. So we just made it to Irvindale Speedway before the sun goes down. They're gonna let us cruise this thing around, get a feel for it. I think you said breaking the clutch. Yeah, that's, a, that's the line we used. We're gonna zip it around a little bit, see how it feels. And we're gonna take it to our special place, the burnout box. Your special place? That's right. So we're in our little Corvette. No doors, no T-tops, no front end, no back end. One seatbelt. One seatbelt. I feel like this is the world's coolest Jeep. It's real low, but it's definitely a cool Jeep. It won't go off-road for anything. This car is awesome. All right, burnout box. Let's get it done. Super. All right, here we go. Have a little fun with this thing, see what it does. I do hear that. It's kind of weird. Is that bottom end? 
Rev it? There might be a couple different things. Yeah, they're all bad. The people at the tire place just now were just like, what is that noise? <laughs> Send it up. Going up. There it goes. I think we gotta pull the trans out. Let's get a jack under there. Whoa, dude. Drop it? Yeah. I sure could go for an Arnold Palmer right now. I got it. I got it. That's a big dog. What do you want to do now? I don't know. Cookie break? When that 472 went down, we spent some time trying to find a 500, something cool in Cadillac we could stick in here. But guess what? We only have a couple days to get this done. And we went and picked up a reliable, run-of-the-mill LS53 truck motor because they are awesome. You can get them anywhere, and they don't cost a million dollars. Yes. This is supposed to be like a fun cruiser car. This is going to give us, what, 375 horse? That's fun. Forever. That's the cruising good. part. It's going to sound good. First things first, we're going to strip this thing down, put a bunch of rad holly parts on it, make it way cooler, jam it in that car. Cue the music. What would that taste like? Hot garbage. A lot of work, change an alternator. So we can drain the oil now, flip it over, pull the pan. Yep. There's nothing really in the pickup. See, just a little crusty. So we had a exhaust manifold bolt break off in the cylinder head. I'm show you an easy way to get these things out. Just take a nut that's a little bit bigger. I'm gonna lay it in here. I'm gonna take the welder, weld it all around, and uh, should be able to turn this nut and pull this thing out. Now, if you make a huge mess and you run your weld over the end, you can just kind of grab it with an open end wrench or vice grips and stuff. But if you do it just right, a regular wrench will still fit. We are getting close with our Cadillac Seville. The new drive shaft we had made to fit the 4L60 and go all the way back to that Cadillac rear end is done and in the car. Lucky's got the shifter done. We knocked out the entire exhaust system featuring those hooker dual pass attitude adjuster mufflers. I'm happy with it. I feel good about it. Going down to party town. We just finished a long day of buttoning up everything on this car. It's ready to fire up for the first time. Very first time, for Very real. Hard. And then guess what? We're gonna take this thing out, we're gonna hit the streets, and since it should be dead reliable with this LS, we should take it on a little trip. Road trip. You wired it up? Maybe. Good, let's see. That's how we do it here. She goes. She got oil pressure? Mm. Is it running hot? Beats me. What's the tax say? Don't have one. All right. I haven't put tranny fluid in it yet. Boom. All right, so we're out in our Cadillac. This thing is tearing up the highway. We've got the exhaust turned all the way down. Listen to this. Loud. Really loud. Quiet. Mute. This thing's amazing. It's like driving a boat with an LS motor in it. Arg. Yar! Basically, this thing was sitting in some guy's junkyard for a couple of years, submerged in dirt. We took it, dusted it off, put a big turbocharger and some big injectors in this thing. It made almost 1,000 foot-pounds of torque and 400 horsepower. What on earth could we possibly put this in? I've got just the thing. So here it is, and now it's time to see what this kind of power feels like in a muscle car, muscle truck. Oh, it's a question for the ages right there. Whatever El Caminos are, I know they're awesome. They're super versatile, they're a great value, and they look rad. They do. We spent 5,800 bucks on this thing. It's the street strip car with no motor in it. It's also a 1970. 1970 is arguably the best year for the Chevelle. Yeah, no, Camino. it's the best. It's pretty rad. And what's cool about this car is it just needs an engine and transmission, and we're gonna stick that 12 valve Cummins in here and see what it does. Yeah, this thing came with a 12 bolt, ladder bars, and slicks. Interior is nice, paint is nice. You hear that paint is nice. I never say that on this That's show. That's just plain weird. Paint is nice. This thing looks good. It's a perfect candidate for that diesel swap. Just needs motor and trans. So nut to drive it. That's the easy part. Whoa. 
what, uh, what are you gonna do with that? Let's put this engine in. No, we're gonna need more cowbell than that. Kaylin! So just to give you an idea, just the engine, from the front water pump pulley to the back of the head is 36 inches, three feet long, and this thing is 33 inches tall, so it's gigantic. There it is. Now we're good. Stop, go forward. You're clear there. This is just to get it in there, make sure it clears most everything in the engine bay, and get an idea, then we'll bolt on some transmission, try it again. Man. We should do this with all the engines. Yeah, but I don't get to use my patented drop it line. I know. <laughs> all right, hold it right there. Man, am I surgical with that thing or what? Okay, so the way that we're gonna mount our GM 4L80E e transmission to our Dodge or Cummins 12-valve diesel motor is with this sweet adapter from American Hot Rod Solutions. This is a big block of billet. These things cost about a thousand bucks, but really it gives you a lot of different transmission options you would never have any other way. I'm gonna have to trim off a little bit of this iron engine block and then uh, we'll be good to go. The transmission we're using now is just a mock-up empty box, so I'm not gonna put the flywheel in or any of that stuff yet. Swing the jack all the way to the driver's side. The handle to the driver's side, there you go. Okay, push it all in. Go down. Come on down then. That's good. Down. Stop. So now we can see if the motor mounts will line up. We tried to put the engine where it should sit. It's actually sitting on our engine mounts where we want it. And I think it's sort of a, the best compromise we can have because we only have so much room for a radiator and intercooler here. So we have to push it as far back as we can, basically until it hits the firewall. Then as far as up and down, it's gotta be high enough to get the oil pan off the ground. I think we're right there. It's, it's a really good compromise between all those different things. We're gonna kinda call it, and then Lucky's gonna make a tunnel. I'll start thinking about accessories, and, and we can go from there. This thing is, is in. All right, try it. How's it feeling there? I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little scared. We're back in the shop with our Mustang. This thing's pretty quick. Yeah, it's a good time. The 200 horsepower that our 86.50 is putting out has to push around 3,240 pounds. That's a bit much. So to make it fast, we need to lose a ton of weight. I'm talking like a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds? A thousand. I don't think they make enough sawzall blades to do that. You're probably right. But I've got a different plan in mind. Instead, what we're gonna do is yank that five liter V8 and trance out of the Mustang, jam it into this tiny British sports car and make a five OMG. We picked up this 1964 MGB X race car on Craigslist and it's the perfect candidate for this. A bunch of the sheet metal has been replaced with even lighter fiberglass. It's got some suspension upgrades, some knockoff wheels, a bit of a cage, no engine and transmission. We toss this thing on the scales just to get an idea of how light it is as a rolling chassis, the way it sits now, it weighs 1,260 pounds. That means we can add 1,000 pounds of V8 and everything else we need to make this thing a driver and still hit our goal. Can we get started now? I'm ready to get started. There she goes. You're doing fine. Just go up, forward, up, and forward. Oh, be careful. Not bad, huh? No, it's a piece of cake. Yeah, piece of cake. Came right out. Okay, so we've got the 5.0 freed from the Mustang, cleaned all the grime and dirt off of it, and it looks all right. It's ready to try to shoehorn it into the MG. Wait, 
You were serious about that? Yeah, it's gonna happen. Great. I think. I really have no idea. Job security. I'm not sure how this is gonna go. I'm assuming we have to move a bunch of metal around and get pretty creative. So step one is to just lower it into the general vicinity of where it's gonna sit and see how it goes. Sawzall. At least. Maybe torch, grinder, plasma cutter. Fix it with fire. Yeah. The height of the steering rack is a little bit un un unnerving. Oh, it's gonna fit. Question is, will it still be able to roll after we get it in there? Well, front of the water pump to the back of the bell housing is 32 inches. It's the worst that could happen. Now yeah, let's stick it in there. This is a crazy idea. I haven't had a laugh all day. This ought to be great. It's a small car. Whose idea was this? I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> It'd be nice to go back four inches. Yes, yeah, top of the transmission is hitting the tunnel. We need to cut whatever we gotta cut. Go ahead and pull it out. I mean, it's, it's gonna be a lot of work. Insanity. Brakes are on fire. Yeah, it is a death trap. Honestly, foot to the floor on the brakes, almost nothing happens. It is terrifying. I mean, the upside, nothing leaks. Everything looks great. So we did our job. Yeah, sorta. Perfect. 